The morale boost that comes from a good, hearty, hot meal cannot be understated, and it really does make a difference to troops in combat. From the battlefields of the Second World War come a classic meal of the United States military, a meal that stood the test of time, and that is still served to this very day, cream beef on toast, affectionately known as SOS or shit on a shingle. The recipe for today's bill of fare comes from the book, The U.S. Army Cook's Manual, Rations, Preparation, Recipes, and Camp Cooking. So the first thing we need to prepare cream beef on toast is the beef. Any old beef will do. You can find recipes that use ground beef. You can find recipes that use sliced leftover beef. I've got some steaks here, like for cheese steaks. So we're gonna get these going in the pan. These babies cook extremely fast and they will render a ton of fat. We're gonna save that fat because we're gonna use that to make our roux. Cream beef on toast was not only one of the most popular meals served in the US military, it is a meal that has survived the test of time. It's still served to this day in a slightly different format. You've probably heard of it as biscuits and gravy. This dish played a critical role in Second World War sustenance for American troops. This is when US military food science was really taking off and really coming into its own, where there was actual science behind designing food items and a menu that the soldiers would not only eat because it tasted good, but it would provide them with the necessary fuel to keep going. Prior to this, U.S. military food doctrine was basically cook something so that the men don't get sick. You make use of all your leftover ingredients to create a meal with very simple ingredients that's hearty, savory, delicious, and really filling and warming for the men. Our steaks are pretty much done. Just gonna add a little salt and pepper for some extra flavor, just to dazzle these guys up a little bit. And now I'm gonna take the steaks and I'm gonna save all that grease in there. I'm gonna put them over here, just keep them warm. It's starting to rain out here, so this should be even more interesting to see if we can pull this off in the rain. Do I gut it out or do I run for cover? I don't know. Hopefully the camera doesn't short out. Now we're gonna start making our roux. This is where all the magic of this meal comes from. Here we go. Booter in the pan. Let that bad boy melt. Woo, there's a storm coming in, folks. This is a whole new experience. Now that the butter is melting, we gotta move fast because I don't know how much water my camera is gonna take. We're gonna mix in flour, stir that flour into the butter, and we're gonna slowly add, you can use milk. This happens to be light cream, it'll be even more tasty. We're gonna slowly add this because we don't wanna, you know, bring the temperature down on this too much. Just gonna slowly stir in that milk, or in this case, cream. We don't want our gravy to be lumpy, but we also don't want it to be soup either. Ah, oh, it's looking good. I may have used a little too much flour. I don't think it's gonna matter. I think like many other meals cooked by the United States and militaries all over the world, they're designed to be tolerant of mistakes. Now, we are gonna add to the roux our steak and all of that lovely, lovely grease that we can get out of there. And we are gonna mix it all together. I'm gonna move it over to this side where the heat is still there, but a little bit lower. And while that is thickening, we will toast our bread. This rain, it held off all night and it had to start right now, of course, right? But we persevere. Oh yeah, look at that. Nicely toasted bread. Just move that bread around a little bit. Make sure we get it evenly toasted everywhere. That bread is looking nice and toasty, so it's time to add our cream beef and our gravy. I can't wait to taste this. Gravy's a little on the thick side. Definitely added a little too much flour, first bite. That's good. I know what this needs. Taste is very good, but it needs a little extra pizzazz. Mmm. Mmm. And there it is. Strictly from the standpoint of hot chow in the field, this is great. It's creamy, 
and buttery and savory and salty. And now that I've put a little pepper and Tabasco on it, it's spicy. The meat, the gravy, and the bread are perfect complements for each other. Mmm. It's very filling, too. Really good stuff. Mmm. What a great meal this would be in the field. Yeah, hot meat with hot gravy, toasted bread, come away warmed up with a full stomach. Shit on a shingle may have gotten old after the tenth time you were served it in a month, but I can promise you it was a welcome change from the C and K rations that our boys were eating throughout the war. While it may not have been fine dining, its strength lie in its practicality and its ability to take leftover ingredients and turn them into something hearty, warming, and delicious. The ability to ship fresh ingredients, butter, beef, across an ocean and then across, you know, the Red Ball Express to the front lines was still a relatively new thing. If you had beef left over, you were not letting it go to waste. You're much more likely to see it served in a dining facility or out in the field today in its more modern form, biscuits and gravy. They are very much the same okay. thing. Now, being a Yankee myself, I had never seen nor heard of biscuits and gravy until the first time it got slopped on my plate at basic training at Fort Knox. And I remember looking at it and saying, what the heck is this? And one of the uh, boys from down in Dixie who was next to me in line kind of looked at me funny and said, hey man, ain't you ever not had no biscuits and gravy before? I was a little bit dubious when I took that first forkful of it, but man, was it delicious. And I was very pleased from that day forevermore when I saw biscuits and gravy on the chow line. During my 2004 deployment to Iraq, we saw biscuits and gravy on the chow line very frequently during the winter months when the temperature was down in the low 20s and we had been acclimatized to, you know, high 90s, 100, 110, even as high as 130 degrees. When you're acclimatized to that kind of temperature and now suddenly the temperature's in the 20s, you might as well be in the Arctic tundra. As the cooks were ratcheting up the calorie intake because of the weather, Biscuits and gravy were a crucial element of that. That kind of highlights one of the coolest things about the United States military. The United States of America is a huge country, and there are many different regional differences between us. A place like basic training at Fort Knox, Kentucky for 19 Delta Cavalry Scouts takes people from all over the place and throws them all together. So you have all these different cultural differences. Me, a Yankee who's never seen biscuits and gravy before, and my battle buddy from down in Dixie who looked at me like I had three heads. But I came away from that experience loving biscuits and gravy, and even though it's not on the menu too many places here other than Cracker Barrel, I definitely make it myself once in a while. Both the first and even more so the Second World War were wars of resources. And the Allied powers won in no small part to the vast resources of the United States and our ability to mobilize an industrial base. Food was a critical component of that. While our enemies, the Germans and the Japanese, were struggling to get by on a handful of rice or a really thin soup that had basically nothing in it, our boys were well-fed and well-fueled the whole way. So having consumed cream beef on toast for the first time, I have to tell you, it was a fantastic meal. And I could absolutely see why it was such a critically important part of the US military's food arsenal as we made our way across France in both the First and the Second World War. So if you enjoyed this, I definitely encourage you to try it at home. Recipes below in the description, enough for two servings. If you like what you've seen here and you wanna support the channel, consider becoming a member or supporting me via Buy Me A Coffee, link is below in the description. If you wanna see some more historical hot chow that's been served to armies during World War II, check out this playlist over here. Make sure you're subscribed, smash that like button, share this with somebody who would like it, and I will see you next time. Peace.